Hi. Yes, my name is uh, Jennifer Yoon Marketing from Solvax. And thank you all for coming this session. And I hope you, uh, you enjoy my speech. And I'm really excited to share the great business models uh, about digital content and advertising and to introduce our technology server side at Stitching here. Uh, I hope this speech could give you some hints to maximize your monetization. Let's get started. Uh, let me start this speech by giving you some questions. I will show some revenue share rate here. So please guess whose revenue share it is. First, 40% to 60%. Do you have any idea about this revenue share? <coughs> this is the revenue share of YouTube about the advertising sold against the digital content. And I will show you another <laughs> revenue share rate. 80% to 20%. What do you think about this number? I guess no one uh, about no, no one uh, has any idea about this revenue share because it is the revenue share of neighbor TV cast in South Korea, the major video portal site. Then, um, can you catch up the big difference between two of them? For content creators, no, no, sorry, sorry. 40% to 80%. The content owners in South Korea get two times of revenue share than 40%. And for the distributors in South Korea, takes one third revenue share uh, compared with uh, you know, 60%. <clears throat> then why is there a big difference between the revenue share of YouTube and Neighborcast? Who are the content owners who has acquired the amazing revenue share? And why did the local online video platform provider accept the incredible revenue share for content supply? From now on, let's explore the challenges happening in the Korean market step by step. Before entering the main story, I will show uh, some photos. The, these photos are about the Korean soap operas and the Korean pop singers. Are you familiar with any of these images? Do you remember Sai's Gangnam Style and Crazy Horse Dance? Yes. Um, what I want to share with you is not the entertaining news about the Korean wave. What I want to share about the Korean a uh, wave is here about how valuable the content is and how worthful the content is and how difficult the content creators get profit from their content. In South Korea, TV is the most influential media and the terrestrial broadcasters, including market leaders, KBS, MBC, SBS um, command a lion's share about viewing and advertising. They deal with over 90% of the content generated in Korea. But, uh, no, no, most South Koreans subscribe to digital cable or satellites to watch the content and the Asian broadcasting companies are gathering into the Korean market to buy their content. But contradictorily, as more and more the broadcasting companies generate the contents, less and less their profits are decreasing. <coughs> then, who is the major beneficiary from the Korean content? Who is getting profit from the Korean content? Unexpectedly, profits from the Korean content go to directly YouTube. Thanks to the Korean content, YouTube accounts for 80% of the Korean video streaming market. Its revenue share was only 2% in 2008. 
It has grown by nearly 40 times in the last six years. Even though Korean broadcasting companies have generated the TV program with high cost, their profits are getting decreased, decreased. There was the dilemma of the Korean broadcasting companies. And I guess almost all the countries in the world face the same situation. High cost for content production and decreasing profit from the content and the dominance of YouTube in the local market, etc., etc. So it's something happening in your country to overcome the dominance of YouTube, but something is happening in the Korean market now. So I'd like to share the interesting story happening in the Korea. In 2014, the seven broadcasting companies who, which had suffered from decreasing profit formed the content and advertising coalition titled SMR. They hoped to offset increasing production cost and to maximize their revenue, revenue stream. First, they started to negotiate with YouTube about the revenue split. They proposed a bigger cut, but it was rejected because YouTube claimed their revenue share is unavoidable due to the infrastructure investment, marketing cost, sales cost, and site maintenance fee, and so on, and so on. And they argued their universal standard revenue split with their uh, content owners should be maintained. They couldn't apply the exception to the Korean market only. So, the Broadcasters Coalition ripped the distribution agreement with YouTube and they moved the, to the local online video platform providers like Naver. <coughs> the local online video platform providers had felt a crisis at the dominance of YouTube in the Korean market. And the broadcasters wanted to decrease the reliance on YouTube. Their interests fit together well. That's the background to pursue the amazing business deal in Korea. <clears throat> According to the traffic analytics firm Korean Click, pulling broadcasting content from YouTube shows a slight change in the dynamics of the local online video market. The service, time, the service traffic, unique visitors, and the residence time of YouTube is slightly decreasing. Until now, you've heard the interesting case happening in the Korean market. As you assured in this case, Every content owner wants a real profit from their content. The best solution for monetization about the content is the premium paid service. But unfortunately, at the moment, the users aren't willing to pay the reasonable cost to the, uh, the content. So the best alternative is advertising sold against your content. So now let's uh, explore the alternative and core technology more specifically. Traditionally, the content owners that deliver the content to the distributors. Then the distributors they add supported content to the end users. Finally, they share the revenue with the content owners. If the revenue, processing, revenue sharing process is transparent and the revenue sharing rate is fair, then every player in the business flow should be very happy. But the reality is different. Then, what is content owners wish? What is their goal? Their goal is this. They want to play the major role in the digital content business flow. They want to control the revenue stream from their content directly. To do this, the content owners have considered a variety of advertising solutions like 
ad server, ad exchange, dynamic ad insertion, real-time bidding, and so on and so on. Here, we'd like to propose new business concept at Stitched content platform using server side as stitching technology. To help you to capture the new business concept of ad stitched content platform more easily, I will show the service flow once again more specifically. Let's assume this white cube is the content owner's platform. The content owners de deliver the content and the metadata to the distributors. Then the distributors select the ad from the inventory of their ad platform. And they deliver the content and ad to the player using their CDN. Then according to the view result, the distributors share the advertising revenue with the content owners. But how do you trust the analytics report given by the distributor? And what do you do to make the whole process transparent? To solve the issues, you should control the advertising platform at your side. You shouldn't delegate everything to the to distributors. Though you have equipped the advertising platform fully at your side, the critical, still, the critical issue still remains. How can we track the advertising delivery to the end. The solution that enables that is the server-side as teaching technology, like Solvox as Zipper. It stitches the ads to into your content directly on server-side. Then you can track the advertising as well as your content transparently. Then let's take a look at the uh, server side as teaching technology more specifically. Most of the first generation as teaching technologies are client based. These technologies use client side SDKs to enable the serving of video ads. Unlike client side ad teaching technology, Server-side as teaching technologies do not use any client-side SDKs. With a server-side as teaching, the video ads are stitched into your video content di directly on server-side, dynamically and in real time, while delivering targeted ads to each user. As Zipper solves all the client issues and are far simpler to deploy and manage it than client-side ad teaching. Ad Zipper has significant benefits. First, Ad Zipper enables in-stream pre, mid, and post-roll dynamically. And it removes any buffering between the ads and the content. And it eliminates the ad loss due to ad blocking and it provides the basis of ad tracking more directly. Something really important to distinguish other server-side ad technologies, as Zipper supports HTTP progressive download that enables both the content and the advertising work on every device. We can give an Android the flavors HLS then you can support almost device traffic you see out there. To summarize, AdZipper is the fastest, real-time, and unprecedented technology on server side compared with the is to implement content, content side, client side as teaching technologies. I'd like to visualize the new business platform and server-side as teaching technology into a diagram very briefly. To control your digital content advertising business directly, 
please put your ad platform into your content platform and stitch your advertising into your content directly. With this platform, first you could control your advertising directly by delivering the single stream to the end. And then you could get more transparent data about your advertising and user behaviors. Lastly, you can maximize your monetization from your content by the first control and second transparency. Now, I, I'd like to conclude my speech by asking you a final question. If you're a content owner or if you're a content creator, which revenue plan will you take? 40% or 80%? Or I will give you another question. Will you take the minimum content royalty from the distributor or you will give the minimum distribution royalty to the distributor? It's up to you, I think. Okay, thank you for hearing my speech here. And Thank you for coming this session. I hope you enjoy my speech. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, is there any questions about this technology or business model? Yes. Ah, yes, they, uh, yes, basically they don't allow the, you know, server side as teaching. Yes, to, to have a business deal with YouTube, you know, they don't allow the server side as teaching. So uh, to have a business with YouTube, you know, we have to use only client side as teaching. Yeah. <coughs> yes. 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 Yeah. We well, but anyway, at the moment, you know, we are on beta version, so this fall we uh, support the live version. Until now, we could support the VOD only. So, if you visit our booth, you can see our demo on VOD side. <coughs> 